If you're learning Django for the first time, it's an incredibly exciting experience, at least it was for me, because once I was able to actually build a web application with you know, a database attached to it, it was like, oh, this is so cool. Now, I think that you might be just as excited, and perhaps you've already done that with other web applications, or perhaps this is the first time you're programming. Either way, the most frustrating part is at the beginning, not so much because of the programming language, but often because of how to actually set up your system. And since it's so frustrating, over years, we refined the way to set up your system depending on what you're on. And that's part of the frustration. It's like, you're gonna see me working a lot in a Mac. So Mac OS environment. And if you're on Windows, you're like, hey, why isn't it the same? I mean, actually using Python and actually using Django is the same on both systems because Python is Python and Django is Django. The commands to get there might differ slightly, but realistically, it's the same. Now, over years, we've refined the installation process, and all of that can be found on jointcfe.com slash from zero. So if you just do that step one, that setup process, you'll be ready for the rest of this series. You don't have to go on to any other step other than setting up your system. But before you jump there, I did want to mention one other thing, and that is the code. So we have all of our code on GitHub or jointcfe.com slash GitHub to shortcut it. You're gonna look for the Try Django repository. So, so joincfe.com slash GitHub will take you here. And then if you go into repositories, you'll see all kinds of them. And in fact, if you type out Try Django, you'll see multiple there as well. I want you to ignore all of the ones that have numbers in them and just go to the one Try Django, right? So this is the link right here if you wanna go directly there. But this code will 100% help you. Because when you hit roadblocks, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take the code that you've been writing and take a look at GitHub and make sure that what you've been writing is the same as what we've been doing in the videos. That part is critical. And then the last thing is, when in doubt, consult the documentation. Django's documentation is very well written and there's just so much there that you can learn that we won't necessarily cover because they give additional context or they give specifics to whatever use case you have for the technology. And then the last thing is Google is your friend. You know, you can use Google to do a search for something that you're not familiar with. And oftentimes that will bring up stackoverflow.com. Stack Overflow has all of these questions from people for all sorts of programming languages, including Python, including Django, including JavaScript, all sorts of things in there. And you just do a quick search. You can search for just Django and you can learn a lot just from that, just from going to like votes. I mean, does Django scale? That's an interesting question to take a look at. And then what is null, what is blank? I mean, this right here is a great learning resource as well. So what I'm gonna assume for the next video and all the other future videos is that you have your system set up and ready to work with Django and Python the versions that we're gonna be using will be discussed in the next one because they will change over time. At the end of the day, I really want you to stick with whatever version is in the video because as a beginner, that is critical. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.